Hey guys, today on the podcast, I'm talking with Judge Craig Mitchell. Judge Mitchell is the founder of the Skid Row Running Club. That's right. So Judge Mitchell is the judge of second chances. He does not believe that a person's darkest day should define the entirety of their lives. And he has started this running club that is really bringing new opportunities, uh, once in a lifetime opportunities to people that who would have probably never thought they would have the chance to do anything like this. Um, this is such a wonderful story and such a wonderful example of what caring and forgiveness can, what it can lead to in a person's life. Anyway, I hope you'll enjoy the show. It is a phenomenal show. Uh, stick around at the end uh, if you want to help Judge Mitchell and the Skid Row Running Club. Uh, he talks about ways that you can contribute. Anyway, I really think you're going to like this show. Thanks for listening. But before we go, a word from our sponsor. If you head on down to OSIOnline.com, you can check out the Daily 21 program. This is a daily program that will help you move every day so that you feel amazing in your own body. If you've ever been looking for a, a daily movement routine that just gets you started on the right foot or that actually helps you stay younger, longer, and improves the quality of your life, this is the routine you're looking for. It is the Daily 21 program, and interestingly enough, it's only... $21, a dollar a day. So head on down to OSIOnline.com and check out the Daily 21s. All right, now back to the show. Pull up a chair and buckle up. It's the Original Strength Podcast. Judge Mitchell, you are uh, a judge in Los Angeles, uh, right? Or, or are you actually a judge on Skid Row? Uh, Los Angeles, but if I look out my window, um, I can see Skid Row from my chamber's window. So it, it's real close by. Right on. Uh, okay. how, how long How long have you been a, a, a judge? Uh, this is my 19th year. Wow. So a good long while. So you, you're you interesting. I, 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 I saw a documentary about a run club that you did. Uh, it was called the Skid Row Marathon. Um, and you seem to me to be like, you judge people according to the law, but you don't judge people like you, 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 you're open to giving people a second chance. Absolutely. I mean, you know, most of our runners are in recovery from drug or alcohol addiction. Uh, many of them have been unhoused for a good portion of their lives. I would say at least half of them are formerly incarcerated. Um, we have several people who have spent close to 30 years in prison behind the most serious crimes, and but that's all behind them, okay? Um, and, you know, I don't look back, and I understand that people are capable of redefining themselves and charting a much more positive course in their life, and that's what we embrace. You had a, a line in your documentary that I had to write down. Um, it was one horrendous act does not define the person in their entirety. And I thought that was just powerful. No, no. I mean, when I was a prosecutor, now as a judge, um, most people commit violent crimes in a moment of great weakness. Um, when their rational mind is not at play, um, when they are overcome by emotions. And, you know, in all but a, a very few examples, I mean, the people, by the time they get in front of me, you know, if they could turn the clock back, they would. They wouldn't engage in the conduct that puts them in front of me. Um, they know they've hurt people. They know they have thwarted the best within themselves. And, you know, I, and on one level, I think we can all identify. I mean, you know, yes. we do not want to be judged by the worst decision that we've made in our lives. We don't want that to be the the final chapter. Right. For and, sure, you know, uh, you know, and, and given my religious tradition, um, you know, I, I oftentimes reflect back on the prodigal son. You know, and, and that's, you know, 
for years and years and years, that Bible story has always spoke to me very powerfully. Okay? Once he was lost, and now he is found. And, you know, it's it allows me to wake up every day refreshed and ready to do what I need to do. That is by far my most favorite uh, Bible story, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, it speaks to me on so many different levels as a dad, as a son, as a, I mean, just so many different levels. No, no, no. Uh, you know, as a father, to be able to welcome a child back after, you know, they've made some very poor choices, you know, oh, you know what parent can't identify with that. Right. Yes. All right. So you mentioned this. Uh, you started the Skid Row Run Club. Um, how when, how did you start that or why did you start that? Um, I started it over 12 years ago. And uh, I was asked by an individual who was paroled to the Midnight Mission, uh, interestingly enough, after I sent them to prison. And when they were released from prison, they came back and showed up in my courtroom one afternoon. And he said, Judge Mitchell, I want you to come down to one of the missions on Skid Row and meet the people who are involved in my recovery. Mm -hmm. And when I went down there, um, the president of the mission, Larry Adamson, asked if there was something I could do to contribute to their program. And I knew how important running was to my own mental and physical well-being that I thought if I could share that with people who are rebuilding their lives, it, it made a lot of sense to me. And I had no idea 12 years ago that the Skid Row Running Club would evolve to what it is today. But it uh, started out with just probably three runners 12 years ago. And on any given Monday, Thursday, or Saturday, we have 70 people at the corner of 6th and San Pedro. We have 150 active members of the club. Uh, I mean, it's just grown beyond my wildest expectations. That is amazing. Um, what, what do you think it is about running that gives people, I don't know, like in the documentary, like there were so many lives being changed and like that they from where they started and to where they ended up was to me nothing shy of a miracle but what is it about running that's like that glue or that motivation or that 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 spark that really helps people want to be better or what is it about you <laughs> so well, it's it's one of those I, two <laughs> it's not it's nothing about me um and i don't know how much it is really about running um i mean when you put yourself to the test and, you know, in many respects, every time you engage in a relatively long run, that's what you're doing. And when you do that and you share that experience with other people who, you know, are as fatigued and exhausted at the end of a 10, 15, 20 mile run, you know, it, there's something about that shared experience um, that draws you closer to one another. And we run three, if not more times every week. We run religiously Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And it's just the sense of community to know, you know, I, I just came back from a run. Okay. Today is Monday morning. Uh, I was on Skid Row at 530 this morning and, and we were out there running. And to do that on a regular basis, our runners in recovery know, you know, if it's Wednesday night, I know tomorrow morning I'm going to be with 70 to 80 other people who genuinely care about me, who mm. are confronting the same struggles that I'm confronting in my life. And if there are housing issues, if there are employment issues, I know three times a week, I'm going to be around people who can help me. And I think it's terribly attractive. I mean, people want to be there. Man, and, you, and you know, after a, a long run, at the end of a marathon or at the end of a long run, you know, we, we meet at an intersection, 4th 
and Crocker in, on Skid Row. You know, the, the energy, you know, everybody is hugging one another. We don't care that we're all sweating, you know, like pigs, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You just, you want to connect with the person. You want to affirm the person. And, you know, whether you're in, you're in recovery or not, I mean, that's just a pretty good place to be three times a week. Right. Right. What and does it feel? The answer, and I'm sorry, but. No, you know, no, it's great. Keep uh, going. So you took, and this this is part of the miracle of the, all the stories. Um, you took a group of runners to Rome, and and they all got to run a marathon, and it looked like a very very large marathon. Um, what, I, I mean, I can't imagine the impact that made on their lives, especially as far as like some of them even just getting passports. Like, what a miracle that must have been just to get a passport to leave the country. Um, and just and, and to go to Italy and be somewhere they would probably never, ever find themselves. Well, this, this past February was our latest international marathon, where we took 70 runners from Skid Row to run the New Delhi Marathon in India. Okay. Last year, we run, ran the Luxor Marathon in Egypt, 50 of our runners. Okay. And no, you're absolutely right. Many of our runners have never been on an airplane before we take them out of the country. Okay. And, you know, when we were in India, we spent the last five days in the Maldives. And to watch someone who, whose life had been sort of laid low by drugs or some other type of addiction you know, to be swimming with the sharks and the rays and the turtles and, you know, staying at a lovely resort in the Maldives. I mean, you know, it's, they couldn't believe how their life had transformed in a very short period of time. That's got to be like for you just to be able to watch that, like it's one of the greatest highs imaginable. It, it, it excites me just to revisit those experiences. Right. So, wow, how you've been doing this for 12 years. What's what's the future like for the Skid Row Running Club? I think it's very bright. I mean, you know, it's it's got a momentum, you know, of its own at this point. We have so many people who are making contributions, organizing runs. We have, you know, Hector has now put together runs every Wednesday at Griffith Park to do trail running. Uh, we have another individual, Mario, who does ocean swimming with our group members on Fridays out of Santa Monica. Um, I mean, September 9th, Chris is and Nathan, they've organized our annual LA River Run, which is a 54 miler, where we run the length of the LA River in the river. And I mean, so, you know, four months ago, I had a hip replacement. Wow. And so there, I've just gotten back to running a little bit at this point, but, you know, I was on my bike next to our runners during that recovery period. But, you know, the club has so many people that have stepped up and, have been vital to our planning and organizing that uh, the club's just in a really good shape. That is, that is awesome. How do you like, so if you, to, to take these big trips and to give these people uh, the experiences that are just wonderful, how, how do you, how do you uh, achieve funding for, for something like that? Well, the first few years there was myself and about two of my friends, you know, dug deep into our wallets and and made these experiences possible wow um probably about five to six years ago we became a registered nonprofit, 501c3 and the movie skid row marathon has been seen all over the world it's now on international flights and we get contributions regularly from people who find out what we're doing and want to make sure it remains, you know, healthy and viable. 
if if so if somebody wants to contribute to the skid row running club uh what's the easiest route for them to take just google us and you'll come up to our web page and they'll you know be cues uh as to what you can do to donate um and, and you know and that's what has allowed us to really expand because I mean, people who are on Skid Row in recovery, um, they're not working. They're going to 12-step meetings. They're going to meet with their individual counselors all day long. So they do not have resources. So for us to take 60 to 70 runners to India, I mean, that's a serious financial commitment. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I hope our donors follow the images that are posted on Facebook and whatever other social media that our club uses just to see the enraptured expressions uh, when folks are overseas. I mean, not only have we gone to India, to Egypt, we ran in Ecuador through the Amazon uh, rainforest. Uh, we have been to Berlin, we ran the Da Nang Marathon in Vietnam. Um, Jerusalem, we ran the Jerusalem Marathon. And then we took five days and went over to Petra and Jordan. And I don't know if you've been to those places. Oh. No. Okay. Um, the one when we were in Petra. We arrived at the hotel about five o'clock in the afternoon. The sun was just going down over what is referred to as Wadi Musa, the Valley of Moses. And there were enough clouds in the sky. The sunset was gorgeous. Our runners were looking out over that valley. And in the far distance, you can see the tomb of Moses's brother, Aaron. I mean, and, and for them just to be processing all of this, many of our runners were just weeping, so overwhelmed by by the whole experience. That's amazing. Yeah. So again, how how important is a second chance for a person? It's absolutely essential. I mean. As I referenced earlier in our conversation, we all need second chances, okay? Um, you know, in, in a family context, feelings are hurt, okay? And you have to figure out, well, how can I put that behind me and, and start over again? You know, academically, we've all needed second chances. You, you think you're ready for a test and you get the test back and it's a disaster. You know, well, and there are there are larger things, you know, you end up doing something that causes you to be incarcerated for a significant period of time, you know, but but you're released at 35, 40 years of age, you got half your life left. You know, what can we do to make sure that that those remaining years are incredibly productive and satisfying and meaningful? Um, so, I mean, second chances are, are essential, um, you know, how, how many analogies can I share? You know, half the people in this country end up getting divorced. Well, most people, you know, that's probably one of the worst experiences that they've had, but most of those folks enter into other relationships. They want to see if they can get it better the second time around. Um, you know, so it applies in just so many different areas. So you're you're pretty much like a real, a real, real life superhero. Um yeah. where who 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 do you get your inspiration from? I, I don't consider myself a superhero at all. Uh, I am a person, I think, who has figured out that if you are willing to make a commitment 
of time. Remember reading years ago in The Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck. You know, and what is the number one way that we convey to another person that they are of value to us and that we love them? The number one thing you do is spend time. Okay. And, you know, raising my own family, I understand that. Being a school teacher earlier in my life, I understand that. You know, the teachers that made a difference were the ones who didn't run to the faculty parking lot at the last bell, but were available to help to get involved in extracurricular activities. Um, my success with the Skid Row Running Club, I think, is largely dependent upon the fact over 12 years, three times a week, I have missed maybe 10 runs, okay? Our runners know Craig Mitchell is going to be there. And, you know, I don't know if you ever saw Kramer versus Kramer with Dustin Hoffman, the movie. Long, long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. But there, there's a line from that movie that has always stuck with me. He's in front of a judge. And the judge is asking, well, why should I, you know, give you equal custody of your son? And, and there's a big pause. And, and, and Dustin Hoffman, the character that he plays, he finally, the only thing he can say to the judge is, because I'm there. And at the end of the day, <laughs> I think we can't undervalue being present in another person's life. So, you know, if, if, if that translates into being a superhero, so be it. But I, I, I think it is something that most folks are capable of doing. Well, that's strong as thunder right there, um, because I'm there. Uh, that's a right. great, a great. Ben Shirley uh, in the movie that you saw, okay, uh, the musician. What does he say? It is is a riff on that same concept. Show up, things will happen. Yes. <laughs> right on. Can I ask you one more question? Sure. <laughs> and this was silly, but I asked this to everybody. Um, do you like peanut butter? Um, I do. That was not convincing, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I eat it regularly. No, I don't. But do I enjoy it? Yes, I do. All right. I, I was just curious, like what fuels you on your long runs? What fuels me on my long runs? I have a sweet tooth. Okay. So running is sort of, you know, the way I can get rid of all those extra calories by the uh, chocolate that I consume. Um, but, uh, well, you have succeeded because you were as lean as you can be, uh, watching that, that marathon. <laughs> I was like, wow. You, you know, runners suffer from, we can never be lean enough. Well, you know, I, I'm a walloping 165 pounds and six feet. And, you know, I, I read certain issues of runner's world and you see someone who is six feet and 135 pounds and you go, Ooh, I wish I could get down to that weight. I don't think you need to go for that, but you're, you're uh, all over, I don't think man. my wife would go for it either. <laughs> all right. Hey, this is, this has been judge Mitchell. This has been fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for what you do. Um, thank you for agreeing to be on the show. Uh, and if you're out there and you're listening to this interview, do yourself a favor and go watch the Skid Row Marathon. Uh, it's really, it's really impressive. It's on Amazon prime. It's free. You know, no, it, it really does a wonderful job of conveying the essence of our program. And it follows five people's lives. And the wonderful thing is, Ben, Rebecca, Raphael, Modi, and David, they've been with the program. Um, they are all continuing to run, and their lives are still completely intact and uh, you know i couldn't be more proud of them 
you're you're doing and and they have done such a good job uh and you're doing such good work uh, just thank you so much you're quite welcome and thank you for having me tim thanks for listening everyone now get outside and play